Hello everyone, my name is Marilena Melas. This August, I finished my Laboratory Genetics and Genomics Fellowship at National White Children's Hospital. I would like to thank the Cancer Genomics Consortium for selecting me to be one of the speakers for this year's CGC annual meeting. I'm very excited for such an opportunity. My talk is entitled Co-occurrence of Noonan Syndrome with Rosette-Forming Glen Neuronal Tumors. Following the concept of one size does not fit all, comprehensive genomic profiling of tumors and blood disorders has been established in a translational setting within the Institute for Genomic Medicine at Nationwide Children's Hospital. This helps in the diagnosis, prognostication, treatment, and germline disease predisposition for patients with rare and refractory disease. Nuna syndrome is a genetic multisystem disorder characterized by distinctive facial features, developmental delay, learning difficulties, short stature, congenital heart abnormalities, renal anomalies, and bleeding difficulties. Mutations that cause Nuna syndrome alter genes encoding proteins with roles in the RAS MAPK pathway, leading to pathway dysregulation. PTPN11 germline mutations have been reported in more than 50% of cases with Noonan syndrome. Other genes in the RASMAPK signaling pathway are implicated in Noonan syndrome and other genetic syndromes with similar phenotypes, which are collect collectively termed as rhizopathies. The RAS pathway is critical to cell proliferation, survival, differentiation, and metabolism. Because of these roles, mutations in the RAS pathway can lead to oogogenesis. This means that individuals who possess any of the rhizopathies carry an increased risk of developing cancer. The risk of cancer for all rhizopathies is about 10.5 times higher than the general population. These cancers can include juvenile myelomonocytic leukemia, JMML, acute myelogenous leukemia, AML, and acute lymphoblastic leukemia, ALL. Cancer development can occur in about 10% of children with Noonan syndrome. In regards to the differential diagnosis of Noonan syndrome, two or more of the following criteria have to be met. Facial features including coarse hair, hypertellurism, low set ears, droopy eyelids, broad forehead, and depressed nasal bridge. Short stature, typical chest deformity, developmental delay and or learning disability, heart abnormalities, pubertal delay, with or without infertility, and a first degree relative with Noonan syndrome or any of the above features. Let's start by describing our first case. It is um, a 22 year old male with clinical history of Noonan syndrome presented with headaches, vomiting, and blurry vision. Evaluation with brain images showed a third ventricular mass extending through floor into prepontine cistern. Partial tumor exenteration was followed by focal proton beam irradiation. The patient remained without tumor progression one year since irradiation. The morphologic and IHC differential demonstrated low-grade neuroepithelial tumor dominated by oligodendroglia-like cells in a myxoid background. Rosettes containing eosinophilic synaptophysin positive core were encountered. Image A shows the HME at 40X, where we have nucinous microcystic component, perivascular neuropil accumulation, adjacent where neurocytes surround a neuropil core. The neuropil is defined as the space between neuronal and glial cell bodies. Image B shows the synaptophysin at 40X and uh, showing positive neuropil cores and also perivascular accumulation of neuropil. And image C shows a glial component partly strongly positive for GFAP protein, the glial fibrillary acidic protein. Let's talk about case number two. He is a 16 year old male with history of developmental delay presented with chronic migraines. The MRI brain showed multiple abnormal signals in the pineal region, thalami, and midbrain of unknown etiology with obstructive hydrocephalus. He underwent third ventriculostomy with biopsy of the pineal lesion. 
The patient remains without tumor progression now, almost three years since uh, his diagnosis. Again, this image shows the rosette forming glenuronal tumor diagnosis. Image A, the HE at 40X objective showing neurocytes surrounding neuropil cores. Image B, the synaptophysin at 40X. And image C, the glial fibrillary acidic protein at 40X. In regards to comparing these uh, uh, both cases, we have summarized some of the main characteristics here, and we'll focus on the ones in green. Both of them have neurocytic cells. Both of them are positive for uh, glial fibrillary acidic protein and synaptophysin, and they have rosettes with neuropil cores. We followed an N of one methodological approach performing third tumor normal whole exome sequencing, RNA sequencing of the disease involved tissue and methylation array. Whole exome sequencing analysis of the first case revealed a germline PTPN11 alteration consistent with Noonan syndrome, leading to the substitution of glycine to alanine at amino acid position 60, also a somatic deletion in PIK3R1 and a somatic variant in FGFR1, a somatic deletion in PIK3R1 with concomitant increased expression of both the genes uh, revealed by RNA sequencing. This overexpression leads to activation of MAPK and PI3K AKT pathways with subsequent uh, biologic advantage of tumor cells and uh, relapse. This image here shows the mutational hotspots of FGFR1 highlighting our uh, somatic mutation gain, gain of action mutational hotspot leading to a substitution of lysine to glutamic acid at 656 position in the gene. In regards to case number two, he was enrolled on our protocol and uh, revealed a germline PTPN11 alteration resulting in a new diagnosis of Noonan syndrome. Several family members were identified with clinical features of Noonan syndrome, including his mother and two siblings, enabling appropriate genetic counseling. Two somatic variants were also found in trans in PIK3R1 gene and a somatic variant in FGFR1 with resultant overexpression of PIK3R1. Also, DNA methylation analysis demonstrated high confidence for rosette forming glenuronal tumor, giving a score of 0 0.999. Clinical follow up identified additional family members with features of Noonan syndrome, as we said, which was very important because it enabled appropriate genetic counseling and cascade testing and uh, management. In summary, comprehensive molecular profiling of two patients diagnosed with Noonan syndrome and rosette forming glenuronal tumors revealed a similar genomic landscape with PIK3R1 and FGFR1 somatic alterations. This regulation of signaling pathways, including um, PI3K, AKT, and RAS-MAPK, can inform consideration for tar targeted therapies such as FGFR inhibitor or dafitinib, which has been used in the pediatric ncci MATS trial. Our study underscores the potential for additional cancer predisposition associated with Noonan syndrome and highlights the benefits of comprehensive genomic profiling, including germline testing. With this, I would like to conclude, and I would like to thank all my colleagues at Nationwide Children's Hospital and collaborators for their valuable contributions to the molecular diagnosis and health management of these two patients. It does take a village for everything to be achieved, and I'm especially grateful to my program directors, doctors Rudan Fao and Christy Lee, our head director of the cancer protocol, Dr. Kathy Cottrell, and all the clinical lab directors at IGM, from whom I have learned a lot during my fellowship. Last but not least, our genomics leaders, Dr. Elaine Mardis and Dr. Rick Wilson, with whom I had the great opportunity to work during these past two years, and of course, the patients and the families for their participation. Thank you all for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions you might have.